entertaining. It's all about Jesus. It's not about religion, it's about relationships. Where beginners are welcome. Where forgiveness is offered. Where hope is alive. And it's okay to not be okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Canaan STL podcast. It's Pastor Daniel, and I'm here with Pastor Martin Winslow. Welcome back, Martin. You know, this time last week you were on your way back from Africa, so yeah. uh, glad you made it back safely. Thanks, Daniel. Good yep. to be here. Yep. And, uh, you know, just, just kind of as a inform, in, piece of information, uh, you know, this week we're, sell, we're doing Canaan together, but next month in May, we're also doing Canaan together. It's once a month, but that next month's Canaan together in the month of May, it's going to be all about missions. And we'll be updating everyone on all the great things going on missionally. Uh, Pastor Martin and some of the team will give you an update on Senegal and all the great things God's doing there. Uh, we're going to be having a, a, a pastor candidate for our church plant in Fairmont um, City uh, that'll be here with us. He is actually from Mexico. Uh, we met him on mission trips in Mexico. He's mm-hmm. our translator. Yep. Uh, his name is Mario. He will actually be here with us. So super excited about next month's Canaan Together. Um, so anyway, put that on your calendar. Um, it'll be the, the third Wednesday night of May. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll check that and get right back with you. But anyway, so excited about that. Well, today's topic we were talking about is just kind of a, a follow-up from this past Sunday's message on Vivify. Um, and that is on the parent-child relationship and how God uses those to bring life um, to both parents and children. And so we looked at Ephesians chapter six, and and so Martin, to the children, what are the what are the main commands that Paul gives to the children in that passage? Yeah, so Paul says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord." Right? For this right. is this is right. This is this good. This is right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so obedience. We we talk a lot about obedience in our in our home and um and you know, obedience is different than honor, right? You can obey without honoring. Yeah. And and it seems like Paul has in mind the obedience part here. Uh, but it's impossible to honor your parents without being obedient. That's so right. it's it's yeah, almost it's implied that yeah. he's probably referencing the command. Mm-hmm. Obedience kind of flows from that honoring of the parents in the, yeah. in the commandments. That's a good word. You know? So Yeah. Yeah, you know, so so Sunday we talked about how obedience, you know, obedience it, it comes from the Greek word meaning to hear underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're 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 hearing the person who's in authority over mm-hmm. you, and not just hearing, but you're doing. And so obedience is all about action. Right. And all about action. And um, which, you know, you tie that back to like Jesus when he said, If you love me, obey my commands. Right. Um, it's not Obedience is not just an intellectual agreement mm-hmm. that, hey, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> it's the actual doing. So talk to me. Let's go back to, um, you know, just talking about obedience, right? Um, were you always obedient to your mom? Oh, absolutely not. All right. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever go through like a rebellious stage against your mom or, dad um, or anything? Or yeah. <laughs> what, did, what, did that, what did that kind of look like? Yeah. So you don't have to get any, you know, sin details. nitty gritty. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. probably don't want to know all that. Yeah, but. you don't. Um, yeah. So just basic disobedience. Um, you know, I, you know, there's something about like those teenage years. In fact, I've heard people say, you know, Adam and Eve had to have been teenagers whenever they sinned, right? Because <laughs> teenagers do that so much. Um, That's pretty funny. Is, you know, just the basics of, and I think it's like, especially with older teenage boys, as you kind of begin to get older, we're kind of seeing this a little bit with Noah right now, is you just begin to challenge those those things that your parents kind of put in place. You, mm-hmm. you think you know more, or you've got the world figured out, got the tiger by the tail a little bit more now, and you've got some freedom, maybe you're driving. Whenever I started driving, I really started to kind of, in my mind, begin to kind of detach a little bit from my parents mm-hmm. and, and, and what they wanted in my life, yeah. the guardrails there. Um, never just real bad. I didn't get into a lot of really bad stuff or anything. But I definitely, it was like when they said, don't do this, I immediately heard in my mind, do oh, this me. thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> do the opposite of what yeah. they say. Yeah. And so I struggled with that. Yeah. Definitely. I got gotcha. you. Know. So you mentioned that's kind of a lot of teenagers. That's pretty normal, mm-hmm. isn't it though? It is. And I think probably preparing your kids, like we've had conversations with our kids whenever they, uh, you know, cause we got three teenagers in the house right now. And so we had that conversation with them a few years ago, of like, look, we know that you guys are getting ready to go through one of the hardest periods of your life. It's coming up. Okay. Yeah. 
And so we want to make sure during this period that's coming up, and we've said it over and over again, that we don't say anything to each other during that period of time in the heat of the moment that we're going to really regret and think about long term. So just know it's going to be hard when you feel those feelings coming on. Communicate with us. Don't let your anger get out of control. Don't don't let that turn into wrath. And so we we prepared our kids for that and they've done pretty good with that. It doesn't mean there's not a little rebellious streak here or there, or if you tell them to like, you know, unload the dishwasher that they're going to do it every single time. Um, but in general, because we talk about it so much that, Hey, let's get through this period of time. It's tough right now. A lot of hormones surgeon, a lot of trying to figure out who you are and, um, in your future, they're nervous about their future. They don't know what they're going to do. People are always asking them, what do you want to do in your life? And so, a lot of pressure. They're trying to figure out too how they relate to God. It's 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 no longer they're realizing it's not my parents' beliefs. It's my own, and they're yeah. really owning those things. So it's a tough time. Yeah, and and I think it's important for us to understand. So that. that's great. So let's let's talk about that. So mm-hmm. especially for a teenage crowd that's listening, um, you know, you're going through that phase, which I believe is natural because mm-hmm. you're you're growing in your independence, mm-hmm. right? But you're not independent yet, right? But you're not completely relying upon mom and dad either. Yeah. So that's why that, that's why that's so tough because there's a desire to be more independent, but yet you're still under the authority of mom and dad. So, right. so let's talk about this from both directions. First, from the child, obey your parents as to the Lord, for this is right. So how do you encourage teenagers um, who are in that phase of, I'm trying to learn more independence. I want to push the limits of my independence. Mm-hmm. You know, I should be able to drive by myself. I should have my own phone. I should have all this stuff that's independent, but your parents are still your authority. And so when they tell you to do something, you have that urge. No, I don't want to. I'm independent. <clears throat> what, how do you coach them to submit in spite of their want to? Yeah. I, I think it's a basic question of living by the flesh or by the spirit. Yeah. So if we haven't asked our kids to do anything immorally, naturally they should just say, yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. And so bringing them back to, especially if they're born again, they claim to be born again, they've been baptized, they're members of the church, like to make it all about that vertical relationship with them and God. So if they're doing good with the Lord, it should just, a natural outflow of that should be obedience to their parents. So we'll bring it back that if we're seeing some rebellion in their heart and we're kind of seeing that play out is to say, hey, are you doing okay with Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk to them like they're born again. And so our expectations are just like it would be of any born again believer. And so if they're not doing good with us, we know either something's wrong with them and the Lord or something's wrong with, with us and them. And we want to figure that out. So, so we try to be patient during those times and we see that they're, you know, they're moving against our authority is to just sit down and have a conversation about it. Um, casual, more casually, like, Hey, we know you're not doing good with Jesus right now. What's going on? How can we pray for you? And we do that. That's, that's normal in our home. And usually because, you know, I think it's Proverbs 15 verse one says a gentle word turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up strife. Exactly. Say that again. But a A harsh harsh word word stirs stirs up strife. strife. Exactly. So if you come at it like that, I'm on your side, you're my treasure. I want you to be walking with the Lord and with us. Um, It really works out. Mm. It works out well. Yeah. Um, so that's how yeah, we approach it. It's good. So Paul, Paul gives the gives children there mm-hmm. two reasons to obey. One, as to the Lord, because you when you obey your mom and dad, you're really obeying Jesus. Mm-hmm. But secondly, he says it because this is right. It's just yeah. the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Again, because God has declared it, and God is always right, righteous, mm-hmm. good, true. Mm-hmm. So what God says is the right thing to do, which means the opposite then is true. Yeah. To disobey is wrong. To disobey is not right, not godly. So that's our main motivation mm-hmm. to obey mm-hmm. is for the Lord, right? Now let's go to this. Um, we'll skip the honor part for now. Come back to that. Uh, if you go down to verse four, it says, "Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath." Mm-hmm. So in these teenage years, right when our teenage children are learning independence, mm-hmm. how how do we? What's the wisdom there for parents? Um, to how do they be? How do we begin to still guide and encourage and equip, mm-hmm. even discipline, mm-hmm. but at the same time not be as dominant, mm-hmm. not be as I don't want to use the word controlling because we all, excuse me, ultimately they can never control their kids, right. but not as controlling to begin to let them experience some independence. How do you balance that? Right. Well, you know, it, it says what fathers don't exasperate your children some con- mm-hmm. some translations say or yep. provoke your children yep. to wrath so i think you know it's like when my 17 year old son goes out and mows the grass okay and he's finished he comes in and says dad i'm finished take a look at it 
I can immediately see <laughs> miss spots and, <laughs> some miss spots, yeah. a little weed eating that I would have done. And so now he, he, what he's tried to do is please me. In fact, he said, Hey, I want you to come see this dad so mm-hmm. I can get, you know, that a boy. Well, he's not 44 years old and he hasn't mowed thousands of lawns through his life. He's still kind of in that learning stage. So not provoking him to wrath would probably be, and, and you see this sometimes with parents, like kids cannot please their parents. They just can't do enough. They always feel like their parents are on them, whether it's through sports or whatever. And and I've even seen this. I've seen kids quit sports or quit music. or mm. They just give up on things because mom and dad never told them they did a great job at anything. And so... As a parent, you have to be careful of that because you can seem like a perfectionist. And kids already look up to their parents, or they should. And and if they do, and you're just getting on them all the time, that's going to move them towards the wrath. So that's the first piece of it. And I think it's important. So I go out and I look at the grass and I say, man, this looks great. And so I'll try to say something like, hey, look around here and see if there's anything you think you missed, you know? And after he looks around a little bit, he might find a couple spots and I'll be like, yep, yep good job. Go ahead and hit those spots and you'll just about be finished. And he'll be like, just about, what do you mean? I'll be like, well, there's about two other spots you didn't hit either. And so we can kind of joke around about it and make light of it. But I think it's important for parents to know because you can go through, you can, you can teach your kids math at the table at night and provoke them to anger and wrath. Um, It's important for us to be patient and to Mm -hmm. lovingly kind of lead them and guide them as they get better at those things. Uh, So I think that's the first part of it. The, The second part of it, Let's get to that. What, what was the question? Well, so, well, yeah, how do you, the question I asked you was, how do we balance the, the letting them become independent right, and not trying to be overly dominant, still guiding them, directing yeah. them, right? Um, so that was the question. I would, I don't, but anyway. Okay. Back I to think the, that kind of answered probably both of okay. those, don't right. you think? So then we go back to the honor. Mm-hmm. Honor your father and mother. Let's talk about what does that look like? Mm-hmm. And does that ever end for us as children? Mm-hmm. Are we ever like off the hook for honoring our parents? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't either, right? So, and that's interesting. I think we talked about this Sunday, but that word children, very beginning, verse one, is the Greek word techno, which is not limited to small children. It's mm-hmm. just children. Right. So we're all children of parents. So this command, especially the honor, that's that's for life. You know, we're yeah. called the honor for life. So, you know, just kind of what is honor and then... What are some ways you've seen just in your own life? Have you matured in honoring your parents? Yeah. So uh, honor, I think just is, it's like a heart's attitude yeah. of, of love and uh, respect maybe towards somebody. I, I don't know if that's a good Webster's dictionary version of it, but that's kind of how I see it is more of a, it's, it's like this feeling of love and respect for someone that will lead to a conclusion or an action that will probably pour out of that. That's how I would think mm, honor good. might be yeah, I like that. Um, understood well. And and definitely my honor for my parents has definitely grown through the years because I call them and I apologize for things I did 30 years ago <laughs> that they don't you, know about. You apologize for dishonoring them. <laughs> exactly. Right. I got you. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I think part of it is like whenever you are a teenager and you're just kind of going through those hard years, and you are, like you said, becoming independent. Mm. I mean, for this fo- for this reason, right? A man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So there's yep. a, there is a kind of a tearing away that right. should happen at some point. Absolutely. If you keep them on training wheels the whole time, that's just going to stir up anger in that yep. child. Yep. So you got to give them away at some point. Um, but I think like gradually um, as you begin to let go, um, you help them in honoring you. But definitely over time, just understanding the world, having more life experiences. I grew in my appreciation for my parents just – you know, for their godly advice and wisdom, just not having that practical, you know, wisdom in everyday life. Mm. Um, I figured that out over time, you know, through yeah. a lot of life experiences and making mistakes, yeah. really. Yeah. And it, it's made me appreciate them more. I'm yeah. sure you kind of feel the same way. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So let me, let me ask you this. What is What are some things your children do that make you or, you know, your wife, Amy, feel honored? Hmm. I think first time obedience like if, if we do ask them to do something just to like serve the family mm. and they do that joyfully, mm. um, I definitely feel honored. Um, when they are excited to participate in family activities or church activities or things that really matter, I definitely feel honored. Um, you know, um, I would say those are probably two big things. Yeah. That their family really matters to them. Mm. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I agree with those. Also, I feel honored when my children or one of my child, whatever will, one of my children will sit down with me and kind of share inner, yeah. in, things going on in their mind, yeah. things going on in their heart. Um, feel honored that they would trust me enough to share that with me, you know, yeah, right. instead of not being worried about, well, if I, if I tell dad this, I might get in trouble or, you know, yeah. instead they, they value the relationship more than any of those, ten, yeah. any of those periphery yeah. consequence type deals. <laughs> you know, you know? It's, it's funny you say that because just the other day, so you're, you're exactly right. And I, I'm glad you thought of that. One of my daughters said, Hey, I think this boy kind of likes me. And I said, okay. And a couple minutes later, she said, I kind of like him too, maybe. <laughs> and I said, okay. And she goes, I just thought you should know. Well, well that's, you know, that's really interesting because one of my sons came up to me and said, hey, I think I like a girl. <laughs> I think she likes me too. Hmm, I wonder yeah. who we're talking about yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it was really interesting, yeah. though, that she just wanted me to know. And yeah. so that kind of made me feel honored in the yeah, moment. Yeah, absolutely. I want you to know. Absolutely. I want you to steer this thing dead, but I want you to know yeah. there's some thoughts yeah, that, there. Those are precious times yeah. right there, you know, for the for the children to honor us by yeah. intentionally including us in the details of yeah. their life. Yeah. You, know, you know, and let's just kind of tie, put the bow on this because that's exactly the way God feels, right? Yeah, right. How do we, I mean, really honoring our parents is about teaching us to honor the Lord. Mm-hmm. So just as... As parents, we look at our kids to see what are the things that our kids do that make us feel honored. Yeah. You know, honoring yeah. the Lord. What What is it that we do that glorifies and honors the Lord? Hmm. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. He's our heavenly father. He's Abba, you know, yeah. term of endearment for, for daddy. Yeah. So the more that we initiate to share with him in our life yeah. through prayer, through scriptures, through just, you know, just... Just being with him, it right. honors him. Absolutely. It honors him. When we are first time obeyers, you mentioned that. We yeah. obey the first time joyfully. Man, that honors him. Yeah. Amen. Honors him. Uh, when we do things that we don't want to do because yeah. we trust him and know that his will, his commands are good. Right. That honors him. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so that's that's a huge truth. And then you know, you kind of make that come around full circle. When we are honoring him. I mean, that is also when we are the most joyful and satisfied in him. Yep, for sure. And the same is true in the families. Mm -hmm. You know, when our children, uh, teenagers, smaller children, even adult children, choose to honor their parents, Mm -hmm. not only are their parents delighted, but that child is delighted in their parents. Oh, absolutely. It's just so healthy, such a healthy dynamic. So, um you know, I heard somebody one time, they, they kind of explained that, that relationship. And it, it is interesting. Now, it's not a one-for-one, one, but like just within the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you've got this perfect unity that exists there. Yeah. And as a picture, just like in the relationship of the home, you've got father and you've got mother and you've got child. Yeah. You've always got father, mother, child, father, mother, child. And so there can be great unity there yeah. as a picture. You yeah, know? absolutely. They, and from the two come the one. Like there's yeah. a unity there that is special. Yeah, and so to see that outwork that's right. in real life is Absolutely. a beautiful thing. And you know that would be a fantastic podcast segment just to look at um, how every institution that that God created, like the family, government, the church, all of those have the stamp of the Trinity, the Triune stamp on it. That's fascinating how God did that. You know, so maybe we need to tackle that in a future podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, all right. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you this Sunday as we continue our Vivify series, uh, looking at uh, this this thing about work. So we're looking still in Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, the name of this uh, Sunday's message is Take This Job and Love It. Uh, not shove it, <laughs> but love it, right? Uh, older older uh, listeners would, would know the Chris Christopherson song, Take This Job and Shove It. But uh, anyway, uh, appreciate all of you, and uh, we'll talk to you next time on Canaan STL Podcast.